Hello and welcome to Soar Financially and the Gold Newsletter. Thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, it's time for a company introduction. The company just listed in Frankfurt on the uh, you know Frankfurt Stock Exchange, uh, a dual listing under the ticker GGA1. It's not A5 like the premium Wagyu, but it's A1. I think I kind of like that, like the sauce, right? Isn't that the sauce, right? <laughs> so GGA1 on the Frankfurt, and it gave us a reason to catch up with Mike Sieb. He's the president over at Getschel Gold, and uh, he's going to run us through you know the plans of the company. Mike, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me here in the studio. Thanks, Kai. Yeah, it's great to have you. We, we have to talk about uh, Getschel Gold. Two million ounces in Nevada. Um, give us a high level 60 second overview of the company and then you know we'll dive into some of the specifics. Okay. Well, we started about three years ago with a, with a concept. Uh, we wanted to find a major flagship asset that would take the company from, from where it was to a potentially a tier one company. And, and we hunted around and, you know, we, we basically kind of looked at all the various jurisdictions and the various assets, assets out there. And one just stood up uh, amongst all the other ones. And, and it was Fondue Canyon, the Fondue Canyon Gold Project in Nevada. And it had a very sizable historic resource, but it wasn't just the work that had been gone on before. It was the potential of the project that really enticed us into it. And we had a concept in 2020. Uh, we basically rejigged the geological and mineralizing model. We picked two areas that hadn't been drilled before. Mm -hmm. We drilled five holes in 2020, widely spaced. We're talking 200, 300 meters apart. And all five of them hit anywhere between 50 to 100 meters of gold mineralization. And then subsequent to that, 2021, 2022, we just kept on drilling. And every drill hole hit substantive bodies of mineralization. Fantastic. Yeah, just like I was one of the vendors. Like I was, I was a director of Canark uh, when you bought it. So that was interesting. I love how things in mining always come around, right? So it's a, it's a small world. It's, a, it's interesting. Um, catch us up on the capital structure real quick so that everybody's on the same level and then we'll dive it a little sure. bit. Sure. We, uh, we have a 110 million shares outstanding. And, and one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is the, the company in its previous entity has been around for about 10 years. And we have some really strong legacy shareholders that have been helping us along the way. So out of that 110 million outstanding shares, about 50 or 60% are long-term investors. So even though you know, we have a, a fairly good and liquid capital structure, it's really tight. And, and these shareholders know where this asset is going, the actual, you know, potential value that we're going to find out here as we move forward. And, and they can see a really, uh, you know, attractive uh, exit strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. You're trading it to 17 cents today. I know. So what's the enterprise value there? It's like it's, it's, it's a 20 million market cap roughly. It's, I think it's a little less than that. Even. I mean, you're looking, you're looking at under, <laughs> under $10 an ounce in the ground. And that's uh, for, for where we are, the jurisdiction. I mean, we're talking Nevada. Yeah. It's one of the premier mining jurisdictions in the world. You, you have a f very high degree of confidence that you can go from discovery through to advancement through into development in Nevada. Um, it's fifth in the world for gold production. They produce 4.5 million ounces of gold a year. So they rival, you know, some of the major mining, uh, sorry, major mining companies of the world or countries of the world. And, you know, it's a great jurisdiction to be in. We're in a great location and we have, you know, a hell of an asset. And the mineralization is at surface. It starts at surface. And so you're looking at it from what we've defined today, you know, about half a kilometer by half a kilometer. But we haven't found the limits yet. Oh, fantastic. We'll, we'll get into the exploration side here in a minute. Um, I want to just wrap up on capital structure. Options warrants outstanding. I'm just looking for a bit of if there's overhang or anything on the stock. We've, we've done a really good job of cleaning up our market over the last three years. Uh, with the drilling success and the, uh, the response in, in our share price, what we've done is we've been able to convert the majority of our warrants into shares and actually fund the exploration over the last three years. So we've had very few capital raises because we've been able to self-fund. So the structure, I mean, if anybody wants to take a look at it, it's a very attractive structure. Okay. How much cash do you have? 
Uh, we have about half a million in the bank. Okay, gotcha. Um, all right, let's, let's jump into the exploration side, right? Like, how are you spending the money? Like, what, what are the plans here for, for the project moving it forward? You've drilled in the last couple of years. Like, how is it looking this year? What are the plans? The, the plan for this year is we're currently uh, uh, engaging a, a capital raise right now. Mm -hmm. Because what we've done over the last uh, three years is we've been extremely kind of prudent with our resources. And when you look at, uh, we've taken 18 drill holes and doubled the historic resource with just 18 drill holes. So we've, we've really, we have some of the lowest success dollar rate for ounces in the ground. If you compare us to many companies, it's about $3 an ounce discovery rate. And so we've been extremely prudent with the money that we've that we've expended. And so what we're doing now is we're actually looking for a major raise to now kind of uh, basically really expand on the exploration. Uh, we've just permitted an additional 12 drill pads. Okay. And so when you think about the body of mineralization there, we need all these drill pads to just continue to expand mm. on the mineralization. So we have a very aggressive exploration plan moving forward. We're currently working on a capital raise to basically not just kind of move along <laughs> at a snail's pace, yeah. um, but to really kind of move through the uh, resource phase, preliminary uh, economic assessment phase, and to pre-feasibility. And that's what we want to do with the money that's coming in. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, 12 drill pads, like how many meters does that allow you? Like how many holes can you drill from them? Like in Nevada, you always have to file a plan of operations and things like that, so. Um, well, just, just to put it in perspective, one of the drill pads that we have, we've drilled about eight drill holes from just one pad. So we're not limited okay. here. We, we, we just with these drill pads, we can drill for another couple of years. No, fantastic. Okay, no, that's that's key, right? So having a bit of line of sight, and you, you sort of touched on the business plan, the strategy, like where you want to take things as well. Um, how how long, or like, what do you need to get to the pre feasibility stage that you mentioned? Um, we need we need one more solid drill campaign uh, because now uh, we have to continue to expand the mineralization as well as complete some infill mm -hmm. drilling to upgrade the inferred resources and to indicate it. And so we need one more solid uh, drill campaign to take us to the preliminary economic assessment level. And then we're looking at a, probably another year before pre-feasibility. So this is, this is a fairly good pace that we've been on and it's a good pace moving forward. So when you compare us to other companies, it's, it's a very real, realizable <laughs> defined objective. Yeah. Any towns in the area? Like roughly, tell us where about in Nevada it is. Like, give us well, a rough the, idea. The 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 location is excellent. It's mm -hmm. it's about a from Reno to get to the foot of the drill. It's about a two hour drive. Oh wow! So it's it's highly accessible, um, but there's nothing around us at the same time. So it, it's not like we're butting elbows no. with you know any you know major yeah. conflicting elements or stakeholders around. Uh, I mean, it's it's wide open. There's nothing from where you can see, but the access is excellent. So when you're looking for like the best of both worlds, like we're right in the hub of everything, but you know nobody can see us. Where's home for you, Mike? Are you uh, North Vancouver? North Vancouver. Okay, yes. uh, almost like guest Reno or so. It's like, <laughs> it would be convenient, eh? But uh, you have a great team locally. I've seen the names. Like they're they're based locally. Yes. Yeah, we have uh, our, our CEO is uh, Bill Wagner, mm -hmm. uh, many years, many years of experience. He's, he's been really shepherding this company along from its inception to kind of where we are today. Uh, he's based in uh, Colorado. And gotcha. so, so he's sort of more the boots on the ground uh, no. individual. Uh, we've, we've built up an incredible technical team over the last three years, too, that have kind of followed us all the way, all the way. We started <laughs> off with like one geologist and now we have a whole team. So, so, so we're, doing, we're doing really well in that department. Absolutely. Yeah, no, inter interesting. Like going through your presentation earlier today, I, was, I, no I noticed one thing and I have to open it so I say it properly, is the release of the WSA. Like what, what does that mean? Like uh, and how does that impact you? Okay. Well, I, I don't want to I don't want to get into the weeds here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but keep it keep it high level. <laughs> keep it high level, please. <laughs> but uh, but w one of the reasons why we were able to you know acquire the project is because there there was an imposition on it. Uh, there was a wilderness survey area, not a wilderness area, a wilderness survey area. So it had yet to be designated. Mm -hmm. It was it had been inventoried, but not yet categorized. And so it was encroaching on the mineralization. 
So it was a potential hurdle to future development. Well, what happened at the end of last year is as part of the National Defense Authorizi Authorization Act in the U.S., and with a stroke of the pen, the WSA, the Wilderness Survey Area, was completely abolished. It was released. So now the, we, we're unfettered with our future development. So this has, been a, this has been a huge boon to us, that now we have the area to basically be able to expand as much as we want and develop as much as we want unfettered right now. What, uh, what, what type of land are you on? Like, what's uh, the, who, who's the permitting it's, sort it's, of... It's uh, federal, uh, federal. BL, BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Okay. Out of Reno. No, where are they based? Uh, Carson City. Carson City? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Interesting areas. Like, I'm a big fan of Nevada, personally, yeah. right? And uh, tell us a bit more about the project. Like, I don't want to dive too deep in geology, but mm -hmm. to explain it a little bit, because I see a lot of veining here on the project. Any old mines, anything on the properties? Like, I've just yeah. recently looked at another project, and it's all full of old shafts and everything. Well, it took it took us six months to kind of go through the uh, all the historic data because there was 40 years of sort of hodgepodge drill campaigns and small mm. like mom and pop mining operations. Mm. Even back in the 50s, there was a, a, a tungsten mine uh, mm -hmm. on the property. So, so there is a storied 40 year history. Um, most of it was like near surface development, small scale. Uh, there was one, uh, the, the original vendor of of the project worked it for about 10 years and he was pouring a gold mm. bar a month <laughs> with his small little That's operation not... um it, it was just a small crusher and a vat leech and and he would still pour a gold yeah. bar a month and and so yeah it was it was quite attractive when you when you kind of see this and it's yeah. it's uh, the, the network of uh, drill trails easy access to kind of get anywhere you want on the project to set up a drill um, the uh, the small scale mining you can actually see what the mineralization mm. looks like like right there in the <laughs> wall and uh, that's what helped us kind of draw it down and envision it down into the roots of the mm. system which of course we haven't found yet no. Interesting. Like I never had a chance to visit when it was with Kenark, so mm -hmm. we never did a director's trip or anything. Yeah, it, it's there. it's actually really impressive. It's you know like to to look at it on paper is one thing, but to actually stand there and, and look at the slope, you know, really nice. Of course, I'm going to say shallowly dipping <laughs> slope because that's attractive for a potential yeah. open pit mining operation. But to to look at the colors and look at the the you know the, the coloring of the mineralization, and then to picture that we followed it already down slope about 500 meters and it's still going underneath our feet and so that's kind of a really impressive feeling when you're standing there yeah i can i can tell the excitement there definitely mike yeah. can uh, see how engaged you are about it as well um tell me a bit metallurgy because i think you've done some metallurgical work in the past uh, we haven't but okay. in the 40-year history there has been i would expect probably about five serious phases of, of metallurgy that have been done on the project mm. part and parcel because of course it's historically mm. mined and, and they wanted to advance their mining operations so they were doing bulk mm. testing and, and testing it out uh, from what we've seen and, and for for people there's two different types of deposits there's mm. oxide deposits and sulfide deposits mm. the uh, the oxides are basically where the sulfides that host the gold have rusted they've oxidized and it's a really easy mining operation. You basically just scoop it up and put it on a heat bleach pad. When how you, how deep, sorry to jump in there. Uh, how deep is the oxidation zone? How deep it, does it it's go? actually rather shallow. It's about okay. 30, 30 meters deep here. Right. So the bulk of the resource is, is sulfide. Mm -hmm. But the past historical metallurgy that's actually you kind of addressed it has answered our questions yeah. for us already. It's, it's highly amenable to just modern day you know, what you see going on in Nevada, modern day metallurgy and model, modern day processing. So I'm not concerned whatsoever. It, it's just an additional process that you have to address, but nothing worrying. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any, uh, like, let's call them deleterious elements in there, like arsenic or, because what sulfide, you know, there's... Again, again, you're talking Nevada. So, yeah, so, excuse me. Like, so there's... when you, when you talk about the fluids that have created these, you know, like these multi, multi-million ounce gold deposits in, in Nevada, it does come, of course, with some deleterious elements, but again, addressed through the, yeah. the metallurgical process. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, what are some of the next steps, Mike? So you, you're going to raise the money. Yes. Right. Uh, lead order in. <laughs> <laughs> and and so so we're gonna probably finish off this year rather strong 
um, but it's really gauging for next year. Next year is where we can, uh, you know, fully employ the money into advancing the project. Do you have seasonality on the project? Is like, is there snow on the ground? You, you, can, you can work 24-7, yeah. 365 days a year, um, but there's some shoulder seasons yeah, that aren't the most attractive. You know, it gets they're, 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 muggy. It gets muddy, right? You know, so. it gets muddy and then you're, sp you're spending more time and money dealing with yeah. the mud in the road than you actually are you okay. know, no, no, finding that gold. That makes sense. But once, once, if any project advanced to a certain stage, in Nevada, 24-7, 365 days a year. No, no, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, you don't have a camp on site or anything, right? Where are people based? Uh, we're, we're quite fortunate. There, there is a, uh, a town called Fallon, which is mm -hmm. home to the Naval Air Station, the Fallon yeah. Naval Air Station, home of Top Gun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and actually, right, out, right off of our project was where they filmed uh, Maverick. Oh, no way. Uh, you're right, right on the salt flats out, outside our property. Um, that town is, you know, has complete resources. Uh, we have our remote field office, as well as our core facility, our core storage, everything is in Fallon. And from there to the drill, it's about a 45 minute drive. So Easy. it's it's just excellent. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. No, fantastic. Awesome. Mike, well, good luck with the financial raise, with the capital raise. And uh, good luck, you know, working on the project, extending the resource, of course, and taking it further. Thanks so much for joining <laughs> us here in the studio. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, no, th thanks a lot, Kai. I mean, I mean, this project is definitely worth talking about, and, and I, I enjoy every minute. I'm looking forward to following it a bit closer now as well. Okay. So it's interesting how things always come back and circle yes. around, right? So, so I'm glad to, we were having this conversation today because I haven't looked at it in three years, to be honest. Yeah. So, okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's has come a long way in three years. So. It, it actually has. Yeah, two million ounces. That's uh, nothing to laugh at, right? Yeah. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this conversation here with Mike Zeep. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel here, The Gold Newsletter, together with Brian London. Follow me on Twitter, the at JRMiningGuy, and uh, follow Brian as well, at uh, Brian underscore London as well. And uh, we'll be back with lots more content here from our studio in Vancouver.